Hi, everybody, and welcome inside Coach Baber's office for our Baber's Insider, a weekly uh, visit with Coach. We'll have here on Cuse.com for you. And it's game one, Coach, and uh, I know that gets the juices flowing even for somebody who's been around college football as long as you have. You know what? It's, ex it's an exciting time. It's been an exciting week. Uh, school started. The campus is buzzing. Everybody's, everybody's excited, and it's football season. Any different opening on the road in terms of that enthusiasm? It's a Friday game. Travel on Thursday shortens the week for it. It's the first time the program's open on the road since winning at Akron in 2010. You know, it, it is a little bit different. You would expect uh, for a program like us to play the first one at home, but we get an opportunity to go on the road. It'll be more difficult. There's no doubt about that. This uh, Western Michigan's a fine opponent, but then it gives us an opportunity to have some extra home games in September, and hopefully that'll carry us. We'll get you into your Western Michigan scouting report and really the idea of going to Waldo Stadium, which you've done before uh, a little bit later here. Training camp, a uh, lot of competition, more veterans, uh, what would you say is the biggest characteristic of, of that period in August? I think you nailed it. I think the competition level at all positions are really up on the football team. And then we still have a, a, a real s ceiling of seniors mm -hmm. that have really played a lot of football. And they really played a lot of football for me. So it's, it's that balance between that experience and the enthusiasm of the talented young underbelly and seeing that competition compete out on the football field. It's been a fun camp. You always talk about the rhinos and the hippos. Offensive and defensive lines figure to be the strongest and deepest they've been here in a number of years, certainly in your three-year tenure. What does that allow you to do on either side of the ball? It, it allows us to practice the right way. It allows us, when you have a, a veteran deep defensive line and a veteran deep offensive line, you're really playing football the right way. When you come to practice, it sounds right. Sure. And when you have that physicality about your football team, it gives you an opportunity to win no, no matter where you're at and no matter what kind of elements you're playing outside. You know, you were coy about it as you always are, didn't really announce officially a starting quarterback until this week. And with all due respect to Tommy DeVito, who's going to be a good one, people don't walk away from a three-year starter at, at quarterback. What does that account for with, with Eric coming into his senior season? He has a lot of knowledge. He has a lot of experience. And we've never had a third-year quarterback in our system come back. Now, because of his injuries, he's only played in a year and a half. Right. But he's actually been on the football field for three years, okay? Uh, that's a lot of game experience, a lot of savvy, and a lot of leadership. And uh, Tommy DeVito is going to be outstanding. There's no doubt about it. And he's going to get his opportunities. But uh, we, we'll start with Eric, and we'll see how it goes. Well, Eric, Benji, ready to get into the saddle and maybe rewrite the record books uh, this senior season. Now, when you take on Western Michigan, something that Syracuse has never played Western Michigan, but there are a lot of common connections, many more than people would expect. Most notably, the head coach at Western is Tim Lester, who has returned to his alma mater. This is now his second season there. He was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach here. He recruited Eric Dungy. Does that count for anything once uh, Toe meets Leather on Friday night? I, I think it does. I think he has an, uh, some insight into the personalities of some of the guys on this football team. And him, along with a lot of other coaches, I think that can help them in game planning. Now, what was it? I think it was Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan sure. until they get hit. Sure. Okay, so once the game starts, I, hopefully we can balance some of that stuff out with uh, our aggressiveness and our physicality to where some of that stuff, some of those advantages really don't matter as much as they do right now. A couple more quick ones here. This is a team that is based. You'd think, oh, quarterback who uh, had outstanding seasons and was very productive as a player there throwing the football. They really run it with Jamari Bogan and Levante Bellamy. They have a one-two punch. They have a big tough guy that runs and breaks tackles. They got another speed guy that I think rushed for 100 yards against USC in the opener last year, a uh, 4 3, three guy. So they got was that thunder and lightning combination. They're going to run the outside zone, the inside zone, and they're going to protect their quarterback. Their quarterback's going to throw the ball a, a set number of times, not a lot, and he's going to try to throw for a high percentage. So this is a, you're one of your classic football teams, run the ball, if you can, throw the ball when you need to and play good defense. This will be your third different program that you've taken to Kalamazoo, right? The trivia answer, where did Dino Babers go on his first road trip as a college head coach with Eastern Illinois? It was? It was uh, Western Michigan. Yeah, yes, Waldo it was. Stadium. Tell us about it. Uh, we lost. I know you did. <laughs> you, went, hey, you went back with no. <laughs> Tell us about the stadium and the atmosphere there. It's an unbelievable stadium. It's a sunken stadium, and uh, they their fans and their and their and their uh, and their student body really come out for the games. Uh, the first time we were there, they I believe they had like a DJ playing and playing in between the breaks, and there was music. I think that was under the PJ Fleck okay. era. I think that was the second time that I've been there. That was a win. 
But uh, it's a fabulous play, great college atmosphere, and it's a bigger stadium than what people think about for a Mac stadium. So it, it's going to be a nice venue. It's going to be a good place to play. Their biggest crowd of last season was their season opener, so you could expect again in the neighborhood of 25, 30,000, I would think, for this game. And lastly, maybe you could get James Brown on that uh, <laughs> DJ there that's uh, one of your favorites. What's your favorite travel tip here, Coach? You, training camp's over. You've been pegging in the red here for a month. It's time to focus and get ready for the trip. How do you do that? The, the, we like commando style. <laughs> no, seriously, that's what that's we want to do. a little more inside than we care to get. We're going we're gonna to try to do as much stuff as we okay. can right here in Syracuse. Okay, and we're going to stay in Syracuse as long as we can. And then we're going to jump in a plane at night, fly over there, open everything up, and then try to play a football game to the best of our ability and hopefully come back with a smile on our face on the plane. Love it. We'll see you at 6 o'clock on Friday night. Thanks, Matt.